Hey, what's going on? My name's Andrew, you can call me Pooch, and today we're taking photos from this to this. We're breaking down a raw editing workflow with Fuji raw files. I know everyone has their own approach, but I wanted to share mine with you today in hopes that it gave you some good jumping off points, ideas, and maybe even just answered some questions that I know a lot of us have in the editing process. And hey, welcome to the Less Lonely channel. I'm really glad you're here. In order to get started today, I've already pulled a ton of photos into Lightroom here that we're gonna go over. Now, I'm only gonna edit one photo, but I do wanna bring you through the process, top to bottom. Recently, I did a product lifestyle shoot for a friend's local business, and I shot film, Polaroid, and digital. Check out the Polaroid video if you haven't. I had a ton of fun shooting it, but I also wanted to make sure I had some digital assets as well that I could edit and also deliver. Essentially, I just wanted to shoot with every one of my cameras to have as much fun as possible. And since we are editing raw photos today, I thought it would be important to break down what a raw photo is as compared to like a JPEG. Raw simply means that what you're capturing on your camera center is what's going to appear on the camera file once you pull it off your SD card. No compression, no noise reduction, no nothing. It's going to be the purest image that your sensor captured. One quick note though about white balance and raw settings. For the longest time I was wondering like, does white balance affect your raw photos? Long answer short is that for most cameras, unless there's a setting turned on, it will ignore your white balance settings. Now, when you upload that file into Lightroom or another photo editing software, there may be an option to set your white balance as shot in camera. Essentially what that means is that there's gonna be a little bit of information in that photo that will say, hey, the camera was set to 5600, so when it comes time to upload it and edit it in Lightroom, you can select that option and then have the white balance set that you used in your camera. All right, nerdy stuff aside, let's go ahead and dive into the photos. We're gonna start with my first photo in the set. I've gone ahead and made all of my selects and five started this one because I definitely wanna go back to it. Now, I will not be using any presets for this one because I want to just start fresh and let you see the entire process. We're breaking this up into three chunks. We're talking about light, we're talking about color, and then we're talking about details. So first things first, I really do like the composition. I don't love that there's a little bit of dead space on the right side of her left knee. So I'm gonna go and just pull that in just a little bit to get the symmetry. We're gonna get that headroom back by just lifting that up a little bit and pressing enter there. Now, clearly we have the subject and then this can that she's holding, which is gonna be important. And I wanna draw attention to that. So more on that in just a little bit. Off the cuff, looking at this photo, you can see my histogram up here and it's really not exposed properly. Like we're very heavy in the shadows and the midtones. So the first thing you might consider doing is just bumping up your exposure and seeing what happens. Now watch as I increase the exposure, obviously the highlights are getting blown out. You can see here on her skin, we're just starting to get a little bit too much intensity. It's a harsh light, not something that I love to see. So what I'll do there is, if I like the idea of the exposure going up, I'll go ahead and pull the highlights back and you can see that light really starting to even out on her skin. I'm even gonna bump the exposure up some more and even pull the highlights back down again to almost non-existent. And there we can have at least somewhat more of a properly exposed image. Now, yes, the shadows are still on the heavy side, but I use the histogram more as a guide. If I'm going for a stylistic look, I'm not gonna be a slave to what the histogram tells me. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with my shadows here. If I bump my shadows up, you should be able to start to see some of the detail in her hat and her hair come to life. Now again, looking at the shadows, it does bring things that I don't want to see, like there's some like fuzzies and just some extra like artifacting because that wasn't exposed, so that wasn't necessarily meant to be seen. So we will pull the shadows back down just a little bit. Now I do like being able to see some of the hat brim and that feels a lot better to me. So just a quick check. That was our before, and here we are now. Obviously a lot more luminant, a lot more bright and welcoming in the photo, which is the goal here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with my whites, and you can see on the histogram, it stretches everything out. Again, we're just seeing that histogram kind of play and move itself around, and I don't like that. Looking at the whites, I don't want a ton more white. I'm actually gonna probably just bump that up just a hair, and I'll even pull my highlights down some more to kind of balance out that shot. And very last thing on the color before I get to the color wheel is my blacks here. We're gonna go ahead and just pop the blacks up here a little bit. I'm gonna work on contrast when it comes to color curves. I try not to touch contrast in my sliders. I remember when I first started, I would just bump the contrast up and be like, that's a photo, that looks great. 
there's a little bit more nuance to that. So let's go ahead and work on building out some natural contrast here with the color curves. The way you can think about it is that there's these three points. You got your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And you've probably heard the idea of an S curve, meaning that you'll pull your shadows down and you'll pop your highlights up to get this cool S, and this is what the image provides. Now, here it is without, here it is with it. I think that's a little bit too much. So here's what we're actually gonna do. We're gonna pick specific points on the color curves and adjust from there. So right here, I'm gonna pull this midtone, let's see, down just a hair. We're gonna come up here to the midtones on the, on the highlight side of things, and I'm just gonna bump that up just a little bit. Now, it does make the skin feel a little harsh. I don't love that. I'm actually gonna go in here in the, the shadows and bump these up here. And we're gonna play with the black point and kind of give it a little bit of a gray hue to it. So we're kind of pulling out the blacks. So the blacks are not true black. The blacks are gonna have a little bit more white worked into them. You can also find specific points on the photo by clicking that little selector tool here. I don't want it to be like super warm like that. We're gonna go like right there, just a little bit scooped. Now, let's go ahead and review. Here it is with and here it is without. All right, so maybe even like a little bit of a flatter image, actually. Here's where I'll go back up and I'll start playing with my highlights again. Pop my whites back up. Maybe pull my blacks down just a tad. And before, after. I think that's a really good jumping off point for this photo. So let's go ahead and work on color next. So you can see here, as I mentioned before, the as shot white balance setting. Now I've noticed with Fuji raw files in general and Fuji photos in general, there is a little bit more green to them. Where Canon might have too much magenta, Fuji has a little bit of green. So if I needed to, I can pull my magenta slider over to add some magenta back into the photo. Here it is with more green. Here's more magenta. And really what I'm looking at here it's not so much the full image, I'm looking at skin tone here. So let's go ahead and see some more magenta in the photo. That feels pretty good to me. Here is the color change with and without. And when we get to vibrance and saturation, honestly, I don't play around too much. I might bump the saturation and the vibrance up on this photo just a little bit, or if I kind of want to go for a little bit of a moody look, I will actually pull the saturation down and bump the vibrance up. So we're kind of splitting the difference there. This does feel a little bit moody to me. I kind of like the vibe. Let's, let's go with that for now. I don't know if that's what we're going to land on. Next up, we have color grading. This was added more recently into Lightroom, but before I play with that, I want to go back up to my tone curves and show you guys color adjustments with that. Essentially, what we're looking at here is you can see there's a hidden histogram behind this line. Again, remember, we're looking at at shadows, midtones, and highlights. And in between, here's shadow to mid, here's mid to high. Essentially, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be pulling or removing colors into your different sections, your shadows, your midtones, or your highlights. So let's look at red, for example. If I wanted to add more red to my midtones, what I do is I go ahead and select a point right here and just increase the reds. And you can see that, look at the background of the photo. The reds are really starting to come through. Now let's say we wanted a little bit cooler look. Well, all we have to do is pull it back down. We start to add more blues and greens to our midtones. I personally have been just on a kick right now, kind of exploring style and increasing greens in midtones, truly in the middle. I don't know if that's acceptable or not, but that's just what I enjoy. Here we can see if I just increase it a little bit, it's it's just so intense, so I only do a little bit of it. And to compensate that, I actually go ahead and add some cooler uh, tones to my highlights and add some warmth to my shadows. Let me go ahead and pull some of that green back out. I don't love as much as I put in. Red in the highlights. Cool. Before after. I think we're moving in the right direction. Going back to this color grading panel, let's go ahead and just play around with it. I like to move my balance up to around like 80, 75 to 80. Uh, it just allows a nice even spread of color. This is essentially the same thing I just did, just a little bit more broad stroke where you can add color into your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So here I like to just go ahead and crank the saturation and just see what are things looking like? Okay, so here's something that's really fun. A lot of times in the editing process, a majority of the work is just playing around and having as much fun as possible. This kind of provided a really cool look that I wasn't gonna get without just exploring. Now there's a million different ways you can get these looks and that's the thing that I'm kind of showing you here. What I might be doing is a little redundant. What I might be doing might be taking more time than I need to. 
But in order to figure out what I like and what I think this photo deserves, you've got to play around. Now I will say this is not the tone that I'm going for. I wanted this to feel a little bit warmer. I want this to feel a little bit more kind of like this Western uh, Americana vibe. So while this looks great, I'm gonna have to stick with a little bit of warmth in my mid-tones and I think I'm gonna do a little bit of red. I'm gonna pull that saturation down just a little bit and we're gonna go back up here to these greens and I'll pull these greens out just a little bit. Some blues to those highlights and let's go ahead and bring some more yellow in. And there we have it. Let's go ahead and look at it before. And here is our after. Now, we are still not done. The very last section that I think about when I'm editing a Fuji RAW photo or any RAW photo for that matter is the effects section. Here we've got texture, clarity, dehaze, vignetting. We've got adding grain. It's, it's a whole thing. And this is where we can get carried away. Another beginner mistake that I made all the time was just bumping clarity and thinking like it made it look detailed and cool. But if you zoom on the face, it just, it, it gets too harsh. We've gotta be careful when we're playing with our effects here. The very first thing I like to do actually is just bring texture down significantly. I will bump up clarity just a tad here to kind of bring back some of those details. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I move on to some really fine detail work is I'm actually gonna add grain. So looking at skin tones, when I pull texture down, obviously it really smooths everything out, but it also can make the subject look fake. We're starting to lose detail because we've smoothed out the skin so much and it's starting to look a little strange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna increase the grain to add some of that texture back that we lost when we pulled texture away. Now, honestly, you could be done right here. And if you're like, hey, I'm good, I don't wanna push it any further, then thanks for watching this video. But there are some tricks and some things that I love to utilize when editing photos like this that really help me push it to the next level. So if you wanna know how to do that, Stick around, because we're diving into it right now. We're gonna look at masking. Now, I've done a video on these new updates. They're killer, I love them. If you haven't seen that, go check it out for sure. I kind of break down another editing process where I just focus on the masking. First thing I'm gonna do is select subject. This is a new AI feature, and it does an amazing job. You're gonna see right here, it's just gonna bam, almost select her perfectly. We're gonna fix some of the extra stuff that we don't need. Like I don't want the stool to be selected. Clean that up nice and simple. But other than that, we're golden. Now here, look, I can change just the exposure on her body, just the contrast on her body, which makes it a little bit more moody and dramatic. Highlights, all those things. So this is where I get to be a little bit more finite in my adjustments. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull texture down just a little bit more. I'm gonna increase clarity just a little bit more. Increase sharpness, just to play around with pushing her skin to that next level. Pushing the subject to make it as uh, appealing and eye-catching as possible. We're also gonna pull some of the highlights down. We're gonna bump some of these shadows up a little bit more. And we're going to even pull those blacks down just a little bit. So here's the photo before my masking changes. And here's the photo after. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with radial and linear gradients. So the way that my light is being influenced, it's coming from the left of the photo and coming across her body like this. So what I wanna do is I can play around in a couple different ways. I'm actually gonna do some linear gradients here, tapping L on the keyboard and just pulling a linear gradient across the frame here. Anything in red is showing me where my gradient is and this little line right here is showing me where it will end so that it is a nice slow gradient and nothing too sharp and intense. From here, we're just gonna pop that exposure up just a little bit. Once I kind of bump that exposure up a little bit, kind of make it a little dramatic, I'm actually gonna cool that light down. You can see here that we have kind of like a split tone thing going on. We have blue on one side, and we have this warm look on the other side. That's gonna play into making this photo even more engaging and uh, appealing. I'm actually gonna move the light a little bit top down as well, so that we get more of a key light look where the light is coming from here and coming across her body this way. So here it is without the gradient, and here it is with the gradient. Great, and that looks really cool. I like that. Next thing I'm gonna do is add another gradient here, and I'm essentially going to do the opposite of what I did on the left side. So I'm gonna bring the exposure down, down, and I'm gonna warm it up. Warm, warm, warm. You can see how it's kind of like bleeding over into like her hat area, the side of her face and her arm. If we wanted to remove any of this, we totally can. I'll just brush it away and I just wanna show you what it would look like if we remove some of this. Okay. 
Again, this is some retouching options you have if you don't wanna bring things into Photoshop or traditional Lightroom. I really enjoy Lightroom Mobile or I guess just regular Lightroom. It just seems simple and easy to use. I really prefer that. And I just, that's what I started working in. The way I see it, it's kind of like dodging and burning without dodging and burning, if that makes sense. Cause I can go ahead and just bring these shadows anywhere I want, really kind of bring emphasis on things that I want to see. Now the very last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create a radial gradient. The subject is her. I don't want there to be too much competing going on here, but she's drinking out of the can. So I do wanna bring some attention to that. We'll go ahead and just do a simple radial gradient. I'll pull that over here like this. We'll adjust it as needed. And we're just gonna bring those shadows up just a hair. So now the can feels a little bit more intentional, like it was meant to be a part of the photo. Uh, and that, you know, we can actually see what's going on with it. All right, I'm really loving this photo. I think this is a great uh, first pass on an edit. And I really hope it was helpful for you to see a Fuji RAW photo like taken from its start, like from the camera, the sensor, onto the computer, and then through an editing process. Now every edit is different. Like I said earlier, some edits don't look like this. Some look a lot more simplistic. Some look like I started with presets. It's just a whole process and it's really whatever you want it to be. The last thing I'll say about this is just be very careful when it comes to over editing. It is a trap that I know we all fall into. We get into the edit, we're going crazy and we just think we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Let's create this masterpiece and we end up with some Frankenstein looking photo. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up this whole album, make all my selects look great and also make them all look like they belong to one another. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here and helping me feel less lonely on my creative journey. It's fun to bring you in behind the scenes and if you wanna feel less lonely on your creative journey, then I would recommend dropping a like, leaving a comment and then ultimately subscribing so we can edit together for the rest of our lives. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have to be that connected, but we can be creative together and feel less lonely, and that's a win. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.